Shalom, shalom, shalom. First and foremost, before we get this epistle started, I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shah, Bahasham, Harachak Wadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel, which consists of the sincere elders and Akim on down of Great Millstone and the Akim on down that teach the likewise doctrine. The speckled bird Hebrews are like foreigners scattered among the heathen that look like the heathen, and the sincere Akwathium, which is to say the sincere sisters of the nation of Israel, listen in silence and meekness at the scriptures command to do so. And for this epistle right here, I want to go with the title of All Hands on Deck. Alright, and right here in this epistle, I wanted to get into the topic of, you know, that sense of urgency that we have to have when it comes to this ministry. Whatever lot the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, put us in, whatever um gift that he's given us whether in the spirit or um whatever gift we have carnally whether it be resources or you know we can we have certain skills or trades whatever you know that's the urgency we have to move the same urgency you have where if it's time to go to the plantation and i'm not the first to say this all right i, pro I certainly won't be the last to say this until you know jacob's trouble or even the kingdom but it's been said before by our elder apostles and other bishops and elders and akim on down that we need to have the same fervency for Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, at the very least, the same fervency that we have for the plantation when, you know, we got to go in and make our daily bread at Esau's plantation, doing these little nine to five jobs that are basically essentially dead end, no matter how high level you are, knowing this economy is going to crash, it should be even more motivation for you to continue in this knowledge and this truth, because imagine how it was for our elder apostles and elder bishops and the elders and brothers that have been in this truth for quite some time. How, how it was for them when they wasn't when the signs weren't that clear as it is for us in broad day like nowadays we can walk outside and we can point to stuff where it's like see that's a sign right there from the lord see it's crashing the economy see the motb exists but it just hasn't been made mandatory yet you know now the prophecies are manifesting but how do you think they had how uh how fervent in the spirit do you think they had to be when things wasn't as uh as plain upon tables all right, because the vision was always there for those who had the Holy Spirit via Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah blessing them with it. But every single prophecy that we're seeing right now wasn't made manifest at that time. But without any further ado, let me get the first precept. Okay, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 6. I'm going to start at verse 8, and it reads Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity, for the Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah hath heard the voice of my weeping. The Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah hath heard my supplication. The Lord Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah will receive my prayer. Let all my enemies be ashamed and sore vexed. Let them return and be ashamed suddenly. Right, and this right here is the mentality that you have to have as one who believes in Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. You got to understand that no matter how, um, Salaki, one moment. No matter how, um, dire your situation may seem Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah, he's literally watching everything, he hears everything. He's controlling everything. So he wants to see what's your reaction going to be in that situation. Do you truly believe there's nothing too difficult for him? Do you truly believe that he can always make an escape for you out of these situations? Or are you going to uh, trust in man? And once again, all of these things are easier said than done. But this is why the scriptures exhort us to walk in the spirit so we don't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So, uh, you know, that's in Galatians, the fifth chapter. Then when you go to the next page in Galatians, the sixth chapter, it tells you about uh, reaping, it, so, it tells you about sowing to the uh, spirit versus reaping versus sowing to the flesh. Okay, and these things are important. So let me go ahead and get that real quick. Galatians chapter six, I believe it's around verse seven, and it reads, "Be not deceived. The Most High Power Yahweh is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting." Right, and one of the um, one of the blessings that come with um, one of the things that you end up reap, reaping if you reap to the spirit, it's like if you one of the things you end up uh, reaping if you sow to the spirit is to have is the heavenly Father Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah answering your prayers, okay? Because when you pray to the Lord, you got to believe that He's already going to answer your prayers. Now it's easy to not believe that when you feel like it's when you have your sins weighing you down, when you know when you convicted in your spirit that you haven't been doing enough for the Lord that you could have. This is why it's important to always have that fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord, it goes deep. It, it makes sure that to the best of your ability, 
you take care of the things you need to have taken care of. That same urgency you show to the Lord, I mean, so like the same urgency you show at Esau Edom, the self-proclaimed so-called white man's plantation, the red Hebrew Edomite, that also because the devil is saying that the Bible speaks of, you got to show that for your Yahweh Bashmah Shai even more because he controls that devil. And you should always wonder and marvel and praise and fear your Yahweh Bashmah Shai even more that despite you being in this knowledge and this truth, he's always provided a way for you to make your daily bread. Especially for brothers that are a little bit more uh, famous among the congregation, those that uh, always go to camp, those that always do video epistles, those that do uh, live streams of their video epistles, those whose faces are known amongst the congregation as well as in Babylon the Great. You know, that's how the Heavenly Father, you got to be really in awe and in fear of the Heavenly Father, how about me out shy, where it's like, okay, in a fleshly perspective, man, I know they know his face, so how is he still good? Because from the spirit, he's been sown to the spirit. Of that Yahweh Bashmi Yahshua has given him, which is the Rechak Wadash, the Holy Spirit. And that's how we all got to move. Everybody's lot, no matter whether you have, uh, um, you've been given a small portion of the Spirit or a larger portion of the Spirit, you got to use it. You owe it to Yahweh Bashmi Yahshua not to put your talent in a napkin. And when that precept is read, okay, it may be taken at face value like, okay, the dude didn't do anything at all, but there's also. The fact of that can also apply to those that are half assing it. And let me get another precept real quick. One of my favorites, in, <clears throat> Salaki, one of my favorites in uh, Proverbs, the book of Proverbs, chapter 10, verse. I'm going to start at verse 3, but the point is in verse 4. The Lord Yahweh Bashmi Yahshua will not suffer the soul of the righteous to famish, but he casteth away the substance of the wicked. Right? So the Lord, he's not going to. Let you starve out here if you're one of his righteous. And this is a precept that you need to remember for Jacob's trouble. All right. And even before Jacob's trouble, because everything that you do right now, we're training our spirit. OK, we're training ourselves to get more accustomed to walking in the spirit because the flesh is always going to tug at you. But the more you accustom yourself to walking in the spirit, the more, you know, spiritual resistance training you have, so to speak, to, to combat that and ultimately choose the way that's pleasing unto you. How about me? i so he can deal with you. All right, just like when you actually are uh, doing uh, muscle training. All right, the more you tear your muscles and the more you build up your muscles, you know, the more accustomed you become to it because it's not just strength you're building, it's endurance and it's stamina. And you also uh, are mentally acclimating to putting your body in that state, you know, because they, they say in the world that a lot of things that we do is mental, like the things you do and don't do is mental. You put mental blocks on yourself when you talk about how hard and how difficult something is. Versus you just jumping into it and getting it done when you realize, look, it has to get done one way or the other. It ain't going to do itself. All right. Verse four. He becometh poor that deal. Well, it's like he becometh poor that dealeth with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent maketh rich. Right. And the Lord Yahweh Bash me out shy. OK. Through the Rechak Wadash. So like, yeah, he brought us back to this knowledge and his truth. So with that being said. That leads me to this precept right here because the the um that precept can be applied to finances and it also can be applied to this ministry the true wealth that we've been given let me get that real quick in the book of luke chapter 19 and i'm gonna start at the top of the parable in verse 11 and the subject says parable of money usage line upon line precept upon precept is going to be revealed that the lord isn't talking about uh carnal money verse 11 and as they heard these things he added and spake a parable because he was nigh to jerusalem Jerusalem, and because they thought that the kingdom of the most high power should appear immediately once again this goes into uh how we got to have patience all right verse 12 he said therefore and this is a rare letter so it's lord yahweh Shah speaking a certain nobleman went into a far country to receive for himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy till I come. <clears throat> now let's get that word for occupy real quick. All right. Strong's G 42. Let me start over. Strong's G 4231. Pragma tuamai. Pragmatu am I? Pragmatu am I? Outline of biblical usage to be occupied in anything, to carry on a business, to carry on the business of a banker or trader. All right. Now keep that in mind. 
verse 14. Luke chapter 19, verse 14. But his citizens hated him. All right. And sent a message after him saying, we will not have this man to reign over us. That's the two thirds of our people, the two thirds of the nation of Israel, the so-called Negroes, Latinos and Native Americans and speckled bird, which actually the biblical Hebrew is like. This is the two thirds of them. They're the citizens. They're likened unto the citizens that hated that Lord that went out to um, get a kingdom for itself. OK, we will not have this man to reign over us. You know, they say that by walking in all the opposite ways of the law, statutes, and commandments of Yahweh Bashem El Shai, and by not believing on the only begotten Son of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, which is Yahweh Shai. Verse 15, And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him, who had, to whom he had given the money, that he might know how much every man had gained by trading. And these servants right here are those of the hopeful elect. Those that get called into this knowledge and this truth, those that receive the gift of the Rechak with Dash, the Holy Spirit, and they can comprehend these precepts and these scriptures and they can learn when the elders teach. All right. Now, as this uh, as the parable goes on, we're going to see who's who as far as, you know, uh, who's who stays and who doesn't. Verse 16, then came the first saying, Lord, thy pound has gained 10 pounds. And he said unto him. Well, thou good and Sakya, he said unto him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in a very little, thou Sakya, have thou authority over ten cities. So that first servant, he was given a pound, he was given a, a talent of money, and he was given well, Sakya, he was given a pound, and he uh he flipped it into ten pounds. So the Lord Yahweh Shah, he was so um, you know, in his mercy and in his generosity, all right, he said, All right. For, all right, good servant, you've been faithful in this little bit. So, you know, you go ahead, I, you know, I establish my kingdom. You have 10 cities. All right. Verse 18. And the second came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, likewise to him, be thou also over five cities. So right here, our Lord Yahweh Shai, he's being generous. It's not about, okay, as you can see right here, and this is another thing that I've been able to glean from this part of the precept. Or the, this part of the parable, our Lord Yahweh Shai, He's still giving out a, a beautiful reward for those that did what they did. Okay, both all of them was given at least one um, pound. The uh, servant that multiplied one pound into ten pounds, he got control over ten cities. The uh, servant that had one pound and he made it into five pounds, Lord Yahweh Shai didn't say, "Well, why didn't you give me ten pounds like you know, like my first servant?" Even though he could say that, but it just shows you the mercy that the, that the Heavenly Father Yahweh instilled in Yahweh Shai. Okay, he rewarded this man for his sincere effort. He he did the work. Okay, he was diligent, and he he obeyed the Lord. And as it says in the book of First Samuel chapter fifteen verse twenty three, to obey is better than to sacrifice. Okay, <clears throat> verse twenty. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound which I have kept laid up in a napkin. And here's the reason, verse twenty one, for I feared thee because thou art an austere man. Thou takest up that thou laidest not down, and reapest that thou didst not sow. And he said unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I did not lay down. It's like you're taking up that I laid not down, and reaping that I did not sow. Wherefore then gavest not thou my money into the bank, that at my coming, I might have required mine own with usury. So he's basically saying, if you was going to take the money that I gave you and not do shit with it, you could have easily just gave You could have easily put my money in the bank and I could have got interest on my return. You just, you know, you could just don't even do it. And I lawyer Yahweh Shai gets into that. And um, Luke, the ninth chapter at the end of it, he says, no man having put in his hand on the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom. Okay. But in this in this right here, this particular parable, this servant, he didn't do anything with the talent. He had the knowledge. He had the he had the understanding, but he didn't do the work. Verse 24, and he said unto them that stood by, take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds, which was that first servant. Verse 25, they said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. 
For I say unto you that every, so like that unto every one which hath shall be given. Which goes back to what I said. He didn't judge the servant. He didn't judge the servant who, um, whose pound gained five pounds as if he was less than the servant whose pound gained 10 pounds. He both rewarded them with control over however many cities they multiplied the pounds into, which just shows you the generosity of our Lord. And that's the mercy and the loving kindness right there, because we are still unprofitable service, but the Lord is rewarding us according to his good pleasure. Okay. And despite the fact that the uh, servant already had, you know, t that he already had 10 pounds, the Lord saying, look, he don't care that the other servants like, but Lord, he already got 10 pounds. So he's, he's a good earner. He deserves it. I know if I give it to him, he's going to actually multiply it exceedingly. He's not going to sit on it and make fucking excuses when he knew what the job was. The Lord didn't give us this, this knowledge and this truth to decide what the fuck we're going to do with it. He gave it to us to multiply his talents. Read on Luke chapter 19 verse 26 and it reads for I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given and from him that hath not even that he hath shall be taken away from him. Right. So those that sit on it, those that have fast or those that take their hand off the plow, the Lord's going to take the, he's going to take the, the spirit off of him, man. You know, that's and this is as far as the work goes. This isn't even getting into the hour of temptation. Where, you know, it may be brothers that were sincere and diligent, but, you know, the Lord takes the spirit off them because they wasn't of the elect. Okay, this isn't even getting into that. But this right here specifically, once again, is getting into the diligence we got to have for the Lord. We can't make excuses and expect to be protected in a time of trouble. And even before it gets hot and heavy like Jacob's trouble in those times or even the hour of temptation, even throughout our day to day, we can't be just doing half ass to the Lord and expecting him to answer our prayers and you know, the Lord's merciful, so yeah, he still preserves us, but you never know when the Lord will just just uh, jack you the fuck up for doing less than. That's the fear of the Lord we got to have. We got to understand that, look, he is deserving of, of his praise, and he is deserving to get what he uh, required of his servants to the best of our ability. So let's just go ahead and do that. And here it goes right here, my favorite, uh, Luke chapter 19, verse 27. But those my enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. So that's those two third niggas of the nation of Israel that was talking shit uh, about, you know, the Hebrew Israelites talking crap about Yahweh Hashem Yahweh first and foremost, because you're not talking crap against the Hebrew Israelites. You're talking against the God of heaven and earth and his only begotten son in whom he's well pleased. OK, we don't do this of our own accord. This is all of the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh from the elder apostles, the elder bishops and the elders and Akimon down and those that teach the likewise doctrine and truth and sincerity. So that being said, those of us that that know what we know, we got to move like we know what we know. Because Esau is not going to give you a, a slap on the wrist because you did less work than the other people that have been sacrificing and putting their faces on Front Street and, you know, doing these video epistles and doing whatever they've been doing that the Lord commanded them to do. He's not going to give you a slap on the wrist because as opposed to the sisters that actually supported the ministry, you, you played the back burner or whatever the case might be. And it's not for the women to be out in the forefront anyway, but I'm just saying. As far as, like, you know, there's women that their sisters that help out in other ways that a woman would help out in. Those that aren't giving their men hell. Those that, you know, are being actual virtuous women. Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai is not going to allow Esau. I'll say it like this Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai is not going to allow Esau to treat you lightly because you did less than. That's The Lord is going to be furious that you knew this knowledge and this truth and you didn't do what you were supposed to do with it. Starting off with us men. He doesn't need you to sit right there and try to be deep. He doesn't need you to just, you know, go through the motions. That's the, that's the last thing the Lord wants. He wants us to offer our bodies as living sacrifices. All right. Now, if I remember correctly, the other priest about one was in uh, Mark chapter four, where our Lord talks about some thirty, and some sixty, and some a hundred, I believe. Come on, here we go. This is the book of Mark chapter four. And I'm going to get to the point right here in verse 18. And this is rare letters. So it's Lord Yahweh Shah speaking once again. And these are they which are sown among the thorns, such as hear the word and the cares of this world. Oh, Salaki, yeah, that's the. Okay, I'll, I'll just start from there. I might as well. I'll just start from right there. So, Mark chapter 4. I'm going to start at verse 13. And it reads, And he said unto them, This is rare letters. So it's Lord Yahweh Shah speaking once again. Know ye not this parable? 
And how then will you know all parables? The sower soweth the word. And these are they by the wayside, where the word is sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts. Now, the Lord is going to get into how Satan taketh the word away as well. Verse 16. And these are they likewise, which are sown on stony ground, who, when they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. And these have no root in themselves. And so endure but for a time, meaning for a season, they in the truth for, you know, how many years, uh, how many period of time, like some months, a year, two years, three years, four years, five, whatever, some even 10. Okay. Endure for a time. It's like endure, but for a time afterward, when affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. So that's going to come when, you know. Uh, you know, your job gets threatened, you lose, your car gets messed up, woman leaves, so whatever the hell may happens. And if you can tie it to the truth in your head, you'll blame your how about me out shy and you know you'll fall out the truth. And ultimately in the obstentation, okay, which is why it's called the obstentation that you know all of us are gonna be tried in. That's the ultimate test and where this precept gets um, applied right here. Because when it comes time to take that MOTB or say no and be exiled out of society or have to fully rely on the spirit and power of your how about me that's going to that's going to decide that's going to that's going to be a big major turning point that's why we got to build ourselves up in the spirit now to the best of our ability we can't um force the lord to make us of the elect only thing we can do is do what he commanded us to do and then pray that by his his mercy he reveals you to be one of his elect that he already had written since before the foundation of the world Mark chapter 4 verse 18 and these are they which are sown among thorns such as hear the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becometh unfruitful right and that's enough these are both the two ways just two ways that Satan comes and um like our Lord said right here Satan cometh immediately and taketh away the word that was sown in their hearts right because if you put the seeds down on concrete which the brother Ganon gave an example of that, an actual physical example of that one time. If you were to throw a seed on concrete, eventually some, something's going to come past and knock it away. That seed never took root. It was just sitting there on stony ground. Okay? And that's how the world becomes unfruitful because of the seafoodness of riches and the lust, you know, the, the cares of this world, whether it's your job, going out to the club, or spending time with this dust amount of people and trying to uh, network and stuff like that in this world, which is nothing wrong with getting money, but you can't let it come before this truth. Those things will sift you out the truth because the flesh is simple. The flesh does not want to serve the spirit. Sometimes the spirit will tell you, hey, uh, pass up this 500K a year opportunity to serve your how about me out shy. Sometimes the word will tell you, hey, look, don't get another second job again. Just work what you got right now and make do with what you got. Your, your how about me out shy is giving you your daily bread. You know, you're being provided for. Anything else is extra and it runs the risk of you not sowing to the Lord and to the Spirit as much as you can. So two-thirds of our people don't end up doing that. Those that's not of the elect, they don't end up doing that. They endure for a time, but like our Lord says, when offenses and persecution come, they get offended. All right? Which is why you got to get rooted. And verse 20 is going to get into it. Mark chapter 4, verse 20. And these are they which are sown on good ground. He's about to give the example. Such as hear the word and receive it and bring forth fruit some 30 fold some 60 and some and 100 right and those are those those are they that when the seed when they um the seed is uh sown it's sown on fertile ground you know you, those who are in the agriculture you understand how fertile ground is you put a seed inside of some soil where you can actually push the seed down on the soil all right that whole process happened the seed starts to take root it starts to sprout and bud and you know the rest you know the rest from it and that's how it goes with the elect okay and once again we are striving to be revealed to be of the elect we're striving to be revealed to be those um right here in verse 20 because once again like brothers and the elder apostles have been saying you know it's not about how many videos and xyz you do that goes back into those that endure for a time in this truth but when offenses and persecution arise they are offended this is why we always constantly uh, that's another thing that helps keep the fear of the Lord in you because you just don't certainly know 
But by having that faith, yeah, it's a good sign, but you got to continue in that. You got to keep sowing to the spirit. You got to keep praying to the Lord that he keeps the Rechak Wadash on you. Pursuant to the book of uh, Psalms, the 51st chapter. But the point of me getting this epistle was right here. The some bringing in 30, some bringing in 60, some bringing in 100. Everybody's, uh, whatever the Lord has given you to bring in, it's all important. All right, this isn't, this isn't nigga world. All right, you're not about to get looked at as less than for not doing as much as the next brother so long as you're sincere and you're doing according to your several ability according to you know whatever situation the lord puts you in as far as your family life wherever you stay and such and such if whenever you got the time to, to, to uh to serve your how about me all shot and offer yourself as a living sacrifice the lord he's pleased with that and if you uh you know if you want to do more you pray to your how about me all shot to get you in a situation where you can do more you know i can personally testify that that's that's similar to what happened to me and even now, I, you know, when I get a chance, you know, I look at it like, well, if I, oh, I got 20, 30 minutes. All right, let me go ahead, you know, do a video. Let me do this. Let me do that. If I can't do a video, I'll at least study. I'll try to get a better understanding. So the next time I do bounce back, I can have a, um, a more thorough knowledge of how to, you know, edify the body. Or, you know, if, I, if, if I'm asked a question, I know what I'm talking about. And I also, most importantly, know how to apply these precepts, you know. Because everything you know, certain brothers are better at things than others. Like, I'm not good at everything. So there's brothers that's better at things that I don't even consider all the time. And that's how, you know, iron sharpens iron. So every bit of knowledge that Yahweh Bosh Meow Shah is giving you in this body, you owe it to Yahweh Bosh Meow Shah to use it. Because that can help the next man. That's why one thing I learned about this truth, we can't be selfish like we were in the world. You can't tell yourself, oh, it's, it's probably not that important. That's not for you to decide. Yahweh Bosh Meow Shah wants us to do a, a work. Going back to those two greatest commandments. Matthew chapter 22. Matthew chapter 22, verse 35. And it reads, Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Verse 37. Yahweh Shah said unto him, Love the Lord Yahweh with all thy thought ye. Love the Lord Yahweh thy power with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind this is the first and great commandment and the second is like unto it thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets right so you can't love your neighbor without loving the heavenly father yahweh bashmi al shah because yahweh bashmi al shah if you love him he teaches you in the way in which you need to walk he shows you how to apply yourself as a true brother as a true sister okay and with that comes you doing your, your uh, service amongst the body to the best of your ability because those those in the world they can't truly love you they can tell you certain things that can help you out carnally but all of that stuff's going to fade away anyway but where it matters there's they're still adulterers they still eat unclean foods you know they still don't think twice about any of the things that yahweh bashmiel shah despises so this is why even in the world yeah we got to deal we got to use this world is not abusing it but we got to also limit that because, as the scripture says, evil communications corrupt good manners. And that's another important part about the body. Even if we can't always be around every single brother, that's the beautiful, that's the beautiful thing about Yahweh Bosh Meow Shah creating this, the Internet, the, uh, the unicorn, so to speak. We can always watch videos, get edified, and that, that alone can boost your spirit. Aside, you know, on top of Salakia, on top of when we have our spare time and we get into the scriptures, we actually open up our physical sword. The sword of the spirit, which is the scriptures, and we read and study to get a better understanding. If we lack understanding, watch a video, search up a video. This is why we've been ordered to, you know, push out as much work as we can for Yahweh Bosh Meow Shah. And this is the last, this is the final hall, man. The elder apostles, the elder bishops, the elders on down, and the Akim on down who's been in this thing for quite some time. They did the heavy lifting. You know, so we coming in with the with the uh the foundation laid out for the most part. And it's one last precept. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. And it reads, Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of the Most High Power, Yahweh, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Right. So the thing you're not going to do is make any excuses about, well, you know, I haven't done too many. It don't matter. Do what you do. What you If you know you can do it, just do it. If you lack the, uh, the confidence or the ability, that's a demon, and just pray. And two precepts for that. First Corinthians chapter fourteen. 
I'll get right here. This is the point. Verse 39, and it reads, Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy and forbid not to speak with tongues. So that's one of the, that's one of the few things that you can actually covet that's not wicked. You can covet to prophesy because that spirit is going around for everybody, man. Lord, he's just, <laughs> you know, there's nothing wrong with you asking for that spirit. It's not like you asking for that spirit is going to take it from another brother. No, the Lord has plenty. It's, not, it's a light thing for the Lord to make you a prophet. All right, as he said in the book of Isaiah. Now, let me see if I can get that uh, precept. I think it's plenteous. Sorry, I messed that up, Salakia. Plenteous. I guess I'll just type it in like this. Laborers. Yep. Thwadi al Bashmi Shah. This is the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 2. Uh, well, Salak, I'll start at verse 1. Something says the 70 sent out. After these things, the Lord appointed uh, Salakia. Yeah, it's appointed. Salakia. Luke chapter 10, verse 1, and it reads After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and he sent them two and two before the face into every, Salakia, before his face into every city and place, whither he himself would come. Therefore he said unto them, and this is rare that this was Lord Yahweh speaking, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Right, so this right here is important because it reminds us that, look, the more people that's doing the work, the better, because there's always different avenues that we, there's, we you can't see every avenue despite how spiritually, um, despite how long you've been in the spirit, there's certain things that, you know, it's always good to have another set of eyes on, you know? Like when you get the account of Moses in the wilderness, the Lord uh, used his his uh, father-in-law Jethro to tell him to set up a um, to set up the order. You know, put up elders, captains over hundreds, captains over fifties. You know, so he can delegate and he wouldn't be overwhelmed by what he has to do. Because there's many things that have to be done in the body. Imagine if it was just one person that had to do all the prophecy breakdowns, one person that had to do all of the Lashua and Kodash, one person that had to do all of the you know watching for news articles, so forth and so on, just to name a few things. You'd be overwhelmed and you wouldn't want to do it. Just off of the hell that certain brothers catch, you got to pray for the strength and the spirit to keep enduring. So imagine if it was just you by yourself. So, you know, the Lord said you pray that he would send forth, um, pray that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into the harvest. So that right there goes back into, you know, covered in the prophesy. Okay. And Moses himself said he would that all could prophesy, roughly paraphrasing. Um, And it was another one. First Corinthians 14 is and that. Okay. Oh, Salakia. I think that's a. Well, yeah, I forgot it, Salakia. But that's all I have for this epistle right here. You know, hopefully, this was edifying and exhorting to the elect of the nation of Israel. Salakia, to the elect of the nation of Israel, to the hopeful elect of the nation of Israel. Once again, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to our beloved Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our beloved Lord and Savior, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Harachak, Wadash. Double honors as always to our apostles and our elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, who we learn the truth from daily, whether you're here for bearing the sincere salutations as always to the hopeful elected of the nation of Israel, which consists of the sincere elders and Akim on down of Great Millstone that teach the likewise doctrine and truth of sincerity, as well as the brother so like as well as the brothers on down that teach the likewise doctrine and truth of sincerity, the speckled Hebrew is like foreigners scattered among the heathen like the heathen, and the sincere Akwathim of the nation of Israel, which is to say the sincere sisters of the nation of Israel. That listen to silence and meekness at the scriptures command to do so. Kwame Yasharala and a Baba Ball. We almost out of here. Adawan Ratiza. We got next. Adawan Ratiza. Shema Yasha Allah Yahawa Allahai Nawa Yahawa Achad. Wa Yahawa Bahasham Yahawa Shai Baba Kusha Baba Kusha Baba Kusha. Shalach Rayam Wa Ainashim Wa Haragium Wa Ashim Wa Abadium Wa Mashapatium. All call Adawamium Wa Gawayim Wa Ayabium Nawa Wa Babal Wa Babal Wa Babal. Wabba ball. I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought the water, the myah, to wab, aman. Shalom.